Well, doesn't look like much right now. One of the first castings of the um, hammerhead. And they came out pretty good. A little flashing out as usual. These look a little dirty because what usually happens the first time you mold up the uh, patterns and they've been primed, a little primer comes off inside the, the uh, silicone. So <laughs> what you get is this, this really nasty look of little bits of primer on the part. It doesn't affect the paint job or you know, or the resin in any way. It just, uh, you know, these here are going to make four sets of these. These are for the clear parts because since the clear parts take so long to cure, about three times as longer, I um, I do four sets at a time. You know, at a, that way I don't have to spend so much time waiting for the clear parts to cure. So uh, another set of these to, to cast over there, and um, and then uh, yeah, be ready to do that today. Yeah, you can see there's bubbles all in there. The mold didn't come out so hot in there; it's just too deep, uh, so it formed a lot of bubbles. And this is facing straight up too. This is how I molded it, just like that. So he's going to make another piece that's shallower until this mold dies to make another one. That's a substantial amount of rubber, as you can see. It's a pretty good sized mold. So yep, yeah, everything's come out fine. Like there's no bubbles in any of the engine parts. A little primer stuck in there, as you can see. But that's normal. Uh, details came out pretty pretty nice I'm happy the gun turrets uh, <clears throat> they're made of res the resin turrets they're a little delicate so I'll have to be careful those when I ship them I would recommend that to people that maybe they might want to put some metal in there I'm just gonna put some metal in there and some of them but you can't get them down in there <laughs> the metal down in there it's a catch-22 if I put metal in there it's gonna trap bubbles because the metal is gonna be in the way and the other way to do it is to is to fill it and then put the metal in but then it makes a god-awful mess everywhere and then it leaks out and when you close it up you put more resin in and you still got you know bubbles in it so i'm just making resin people can switch them out or perhaps have them printed same with these little guys here you know there's four sets to the turrets this is the turrets and uh, over here is what, the last of the parts that have to be molded you know this one was the this, that was a gallon this this pretty much over there that's a gallon of rubber to do this much so far. So I'll top this one off. One good thing about silicone is that it sticks to itself. It becomes, you know, it's like you never even knew it was two halves. Unless one's got a little more kicker in it than the other. So yeah, that's the top. And this is the big engine section I was telling you about. You know, uh, this is a piece I just remembered. This is what I mean about, oh yeah, I forgot. Gotta make them. This is for the very back of the ship that goes on this. Because, you know, that I pour it from the other side, right? So you get this empty space or empty detail so that's what that's for to do there and of course the body over here and we'll go over here to uh, the display base this is what you're gonna get this comes with the kit now what I'm gonna do and you're gonna have to do this too because I'm not gonna include it with the kit is I got this piece of wooden oak I just cut it into a circle and I'll, and I'll route it an edge on here and then I'll glue that on there and then stain it you know, I'm gonna make this look a little bit more classic. I want to paint this like sort of a uh, copper color, you know, and maybe weather it down a little bit. So that's my plan. The head here I had to fix, more or less you could say fix. For some reason, I or I know why, I, I had it kind of cut at an angle like this. In the picture, it looks like it angles back, but I was wrong because what actually had happened in the film, this is how I went by. I said, oh yeah, it's definitely got an angle back. No, the head was actually crushed back when it hit the ship. So this whole top section was broken off and forced back. So that gives it that illusion that it had an angle there, but it didn't. So probably as they're pushing harder and harder on it, you know, it uh, finally just cracked up there. And uh, that was it, because you can see it doesn't have, you know, straight across, just like the bottom. That's the only thing I have left is the bottom. Can't really see anything on the bottom, any detail on the head, so I have no idea what's there. The top is easy to figure out because you know the detail here you can see has a long strip across the top, which I have there too. See, so things like that. Um, but yeah, that's the update so far. Yeah, so that's the build so far. Uh, my personal build, I'm going to do the Ranger over there. 
Uh, it's been sitting here a long time. I want to get it done. I just got to do an interior for it. It won't be a super interior, but it'll, it'll look like the shell. As much as, much as an interior you can fit in that thing, it's kind of a Irwin Allen-ish type of ship for as new as the model where the film was made because uh, you could never fit that interior in that ship. So I got to kind of fool with it a little bit, you know, make it work, which I have so far. It's working okay. So that's next on the personal model why I'm doing the directions for this thing. Uh, the directions built, as I call because everything's done with photos on my directions. I don't do line drawings and all that crap. Life's too short. But the next thing I'm going to work on is the blockade runner. I'm going to retool it, uh, make it a lot easier to build, uh, especially the engines. Uh, and make it a little more accurate, maybe to the Return of the Jedi version. And also make it so you can do the Han Solo version as well, you know, with a falcon head and all that. So, um, yeah, that's my, my plan. I, don't even have a, I haven't had a blockade runner on my shelf since I built the original one, which I sold five years ago, I guess. You know, moving money. Sold a lot of them. I also sold my sand crawler, which I want to build another one for myself. And put the ramp inside uh, in the front of the sand crawler. That's down, way down the road. So that's next on the road. I was going to do the Osprey over there next, but there's still quite a bit that has to be done to make it into a kit. And all the interior work still has to be done. Uh, some of the engine work. Uh, but yeah, substantial amount of work still to do. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's it. We'll talk later. Bye.